Oh, I do need my T-square. So, Frank, what are we doing today? So, we're gonna talk about what I did yesterday first. The last video, we evacuated all these tanks, got all the propane out of them. We pulled all the valves out and, uh, you know, filled them with water, but I saved one. So we're gonna uh, cut this tank today and show you how. Make sure that if you're scared of this, do not attempt it. You should be very well informed, um, more informed than my videos are doing because there is a lot of safety stuff you gotta maintain and take care of. All right, so this is the victim. These tanks are called seconds. So what happened at the factory, this tank, something hit it. It fell, something happened to it. It busted something, but this has got a big dent in the top of it. So that tank's no good no more as far as the, the gas company's concerned. So the first thing we're gonna do is try to get this, it doesn't have to be perfect for this part, but we're gonna try to get somewhat of a level reference on this thing. We're a little bit low on this end, so I'm just gonna go grab me a couple pieces of quarter inch plate. All right. I lifted that propane tank by hand. So we're dead on. Okay, so uh, we got our tank level lengthwise. Now rotation, you know, we're not gonna cut the mark we're making. We're just making a zone that uh, is gonna be our no cut zone, right? So we're not essentially worried that this thing is exactly clocked at 12, but we're gonna find top dead center anyway where it's at. So I use this tool here. It's called a center head square. If you've seen our expert tips series, You'll see one of these where I did this. Um, but anyway, this thing is adjustable. You loosen this, it raises up and down, right? You tighten that down, and then this edge is perfectly center in the middle of this vortex, vertex here. Boom, and you just adjust that to where the bottom of this doesn't hit the tank, but you get it close, right? So you just get it set like that to where we can see a place to mark. So now we're gonna take this center head square like that. These levels have a groove in them and a magnet. Make sure that you're down inside the groove like that. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna watch this horizontal bubble. And we're gonna move this back and forth. From where I was sitting, it looks pretty close. Now I always make an arrow and uh, that way I know what point of my mark actually is the center. That is my center mark. Okay, so the next step, I always try to get some kind of a reference measurement from the from this plane. When you're talking about geometry, this is a plane, right? So from this plane, I try to get some kind of a reference on the side of that. And you're not gonna be able to go straight down the middle because we got all this junk in the way. So I try to just kind of get as close as I can, like that. Then I go down here, and I know that from here, that measurement's right. But, so I'm gonna subtract two inches. So I know that 15 inches is actually gonna be like, uh, I'm gonna actually add two inches to it. So 15 is gonna be like 17, right? All right, so I got that mark. And then I got my floppy tape measure. This is how I get the circumference of the tank. I do like this and pull it out. And I wrap it all the way around. I get it on here and put it like on the number two because I got this thing in the way. So I subtract two inches from this. So it's gonna be 75 and a quarter is my, my outside circumference, right? So I know that if I take 75.25 divided by four, that'll help me establish quadrants. Divide by four. Teacher always said we would never have calculators with us everywhere we go. <laughs> she was wrong. 18.8125. Like, 18 and like three quarters is close enough. So now I can take this here, set it on the two mark and I can run around. You can set it on this mark, but you gotta make sure that, you know, cause you get, gotta account for that. So I set that on the two mark, right? So I'm gonna subtract two from whatever this is. So, or add two. So 18 and three quarters would be 20 and three quarters, right? Now I'm gonna carry that line on the other side too. So now we got our mark here at 20 and three quarters. So if you wanna verify that, like that you're clocked, cause this is plumb right here at top dead center, we can use our center head square and our level. 
and do the same thing. So we just lined it up on there. This time we're gonna watch the, the horizontal bubble. And uh, I mean, that's dang close right there. So now we're gonna take our level, and just make little marks all the way around at plumb. You know, if you got some kind of a level that you can see better, use it. But we're just gonna get this bubble in the middle and we're gonna make a small, like a two inch mark. And we're gonna fall, carry that line all the way around. So depending on where your firebox is gonna be, if this is an open offset, I'm gonna put the firebox at 50%. So I would just carry this line all the way around horizontally at that point. Now, if you're gonna put like a reverse flow plate in there and you want your, your baffle plate a couple of inches below the cooking racks, two to four inches below, then you would need to drop this line that we just made at three o'clock. You'd wanna drop that line down that many inches so that you don't cut above it, you know. Um, in, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this horizontally all the way across. Okay, so if you notice, I mean, I don't know, I can't, haven't looked back at it or not. This may not be exactly level or might have a little swim in it or something, but this is what we call the do not cut line. So it doesn't matter. We're gonna mark this later for precision. So we're just gonna cut like an inch below that. Um, funny story is, is that uh, this whole head actually gets cut off of this tank, but I wanted to at least mark it out and show you how I would mark out a notch. So if I was gonna make this into an open offset, I typically go 50% high, 50% of this height. That's why we're in the center, three o'clock to nine o'clock, right? If I was gonna make a reverse flow or a traditional offset with tuning plates, I'm gonna hold that down because we're cooking from the bottom up. On an offset, open offset, we're cooking from the top down, so I keep this up pretty high. Now, uh, on a reverse flow, our baffle plate needs to be about a two, couple inches to four inches below our cooking grate, so we have to account for that. So we would come down about three or four inches here and uh, make make another mark, you know, and that would we would cut below that. Just get a hole in it, like that other tank over there, and uh, you know, make it safe to work with. That's really all we're trying to do. Um, on this one here, there's a warming cabinet and a firebox, so you really don't need this notch on there. We're actually gonna come right here on this seam and we're just gonna follow this seam and cut this tank off. So now we're filling this thing full of water. Filling it full of water because we know if this thing's full of water, there ain't no flammable vapor in it, right? Gluggy. It's <laughs> like pushing it out. The safety precautions here is there is water in this tank and you're using something with electrical power. So you wanna make sure like if you've got cords laid out and stuff, make sure you're on a GFI outlet of some kind and then keep everything like I use, let me get it. I use a stand like this and I literally put my extension cord around it and fasten it with a clip or something like that so I can make sure that this won't land or lay in the water. Um, you know, that's one way you can do it. Um, I think it's actually a little safer to use plasma or a cutting torch or something. You're not gonna hurt the tank cutting either way. Um, the way I cut these is I leave the water in them when I'm cutting. Uh, you'll see I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna pull this cutter upwards like this as I cut. Um, that's a really good way of doing it for, for here. Um, if you're scared of this or you don't have one or something like that, if you're going to use an electrical grinder of some kind with a slicer wheel on it, I only recommend a Metabo. And the reason for that is these discs will rupture and shear off and go through your head if you're not careful. So the Metabo, these specifically, these Metabo cutters have a clutch in them. So if this wheel was to grab, because as you cut these tanks, they'll, they'll move. So as you're cutting here along this head, this tank will squeeze together sometimes and it'll pinch the blade bigger than heck. And it'll grab a hold of that blade and it'll just knock a chunk out of it and the rest of the wheel will shatter and come off. If you use a Metabo brand slicer, it's got a, there's other brands, but they've got a clutch in them that keeps that from shattering like that. What's going on, Frank? Well, I was gonna show you how to use the plasma cutter. 
as with all things when you're on camera something breaks <laughs> or we don't have the right our consumables are bad in the and i don't have any more so anyway maybe in a future video i'll show you how to use the plasma to cut this tank but so i'm going to use a metabo so we're going to cut we're going to cut down low and then start cutting coming up as water's draining out we're going to cut from the top down that way we don't get water inside of our metabo Rule number one, don't stop and take a break when you're cutting a tank. Because if there was in fact gas in that tank and we start jacking around or whatever, every moment that you're not cutting is a moment that there's some vapor coming out of that oil that's in the tank. So uh, you just gotta be careful. Once that water starts coming out, it's sucking air in with it unless you're back purging with CO2 or something else to, to kind of keep just a little bit of pressure in there and keep the oxygen out. Um, it's real dangerous to walk away. Don't, don't stop in the middle of a cut and go to town because, you know, it's dangerous. So this tank's a little bit thinner than I thought it was. It's about, I don't know, it's like weird. It's like in between an eighth inch, like in between 10 gauge and seven gauge kind of deal. Um, so anyway, it wasn't that bad at all to cut off with a Metabo like we did. Um, notice there's like a piece of this head right here has, is swedged. So if you notice, that's why I didn't cut on the seam. I cut a little bit away from the seam and I was still a little bit close. Now, when you're, if your cut is, is off, it's not a big deal because you're gonna have a big old nice flat firebox that you can use to help mark it with but you can also mark from the center of your weld seam over. And uh, that weld seam is generally pretty darn square to the tank because it's it's mechanical process. It's not a human welding that. So uh, anyway, look at there, we're empty. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, like the video, hit the subscribe button, hit that little uh, uh, notifications bell. Come back here for more stuff like this. We want to bring you as much value as we possibly can and teach you how to get your smoker built going. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching.